smashing. A very good morning to everybody there on this um, uh, beautiful Sunday morning. Um, uh, I hope you've all avoided the flooding and whatever else has been coming our way. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the pictures of the drone over Flixton and Firmston uh, with the riverbanks bursting. Um, I'm glad you're high up, June. I was particularly worried about you living near the riverbank, but I've noticed you're high up, so you'll be okay. <laughs> so we'll begin today's service um, with our opening hymn. And we're still in the Christmas season. It's the third Sunday of Epiphany. And our Christmas hymn today is As With Gladless Men of Old. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins in a short period of silence. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonders of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we now sing our gradual hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine.
Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that of yours? Or to me, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who drew the, who drew the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My sermon today, I first gave um, just over five years ago. So apologies if you have um, exceptional memories and, can, and will remember me preaching this before. It is changed very slightly. Um, it's not so much a sermon, it's a story. And it's taken from the perspective of the wine slave at that wedding. It's called The Wine Slave's Tale. May the words of my mouth and thoughts of my heart uh, be always upon thee, my God and my Redeemer. Amen. I love a wedding, don't you? In normal circumstances, I mean. The sense of hope and new beginnings, the celebration mingled with the feeling of expectation, the happy couple about to start their life together, and their friends and families, oh, all those people, coming together as one to join in the feasting and, of course, the drinking. That's where I come in, serving the food and the wine. There are a lot worse jobs for a slave, let me tell you. I've done my fair share of them, mucking out the stables, literally slaving away in a hot kitchen. I'm done with those. I've worked my way up into the dining hall, where it's warm, but not too hot. The smells are nice, and the people are happy and mostly pleasant. The wedding that day will always stick in my mind. It started off like any other. If anything, the groom was poorer than the usual crowd, but he'd spent what he could on making sure it was a fairly decent do. It was one of my first forays into the dining hall too, serving the food and the wine. The guests, you could have guests back then, they arrived as normal, drawing water from the large washing jars to wash their hands and the dust off their feet before they sat down. And the sommelier called the other servants and me together outside and gave us our orders for the meal. He made that clear enough. This one was no wedding feast. It was merely a meal. I won't tell you the word he used to describe the wine the groom had provided, but he was just as scathing about its quality as its quantity. Be sparing, he told us. You need to make it last. There's barely enough to go around. The wine was not going to be flowing freely here. It was not a good sign for the marriage. It was part way through the second course that he arrived, the rabbi. I don't think he was known as that back then, though. The carpenter's son, I think they called him. From the looks on the faces of the wedding party, I'm not entirely sure he had been expected to turn up. 
They knew him, that was clear enough. The groom was a cousin, maybe a younger brother. I don't remember, but I'm sure they were related. Anyway, he'd been invited, but even though they didn't really expect him, he turned up. And he brought an entourage. I was standing at the washing jars, washing the plates from the first course. The rabbi and his disciples walked straight past. They didn't even stop to draw water to wash the dirt off the world of the world off them before they sat down. It wasn't just me who noticed that. There were a few raised eyebrows and tuts from some of the other guests there, I can tell you. As soon as he turned up, though, things started to change. He called for wine, and now he was there, there was no being frugal with it. It was so odd. From that point on, we topped up everyone's cups even before the guests asked for it. It just felt such a natural thing to do. In his presence, that meal really did turn into a feast after all. Wine was flowing freely and cups ran over. Naturally, with the other servants and I pouring the wine like there was no tomorrow, it ran out. Now, this really was a bad sign, especially at a wedding. In our culture, we believe that the wedding feast is an image of the kingdom of God, and also that wine is one of the signs of the coming of the Messiah. So you can probably guess how bad it is for wine to run out at a wedding. Without joking, grooms have been sued by guests for less. It really is a bad omen. And it's incredibly rude hosting. And for us, the servants in charge of pouring and distributing the stuff, well, let's just say I was fully expecting that to not just be one of my first, but certainly my last shift in the dining hall. The sommelier was not going to be happy. I was praying that he'd take pity and only send me back into the kitchens as my punishment. I deserved much worse than that. One of the guests must have noticed us panicking. She pieced it together and I saw a look of concern appear on her face. She made her way over to the rabbi. I decided to make a pretense at clearing up so I could go over to the table. I wanted to hear what was being said. The woman kissed the rabbi and started to speak. Amongst that concern, I thought I detected a hint of excitement in her voice. They have no wine, she said. Is this how it all starts? Is this his plan? This thing you're asking, he replied slowly. You do know what it means for you, what it means for me. Do you want this journey to start here? Are you ready for it? The woman went white. She looked at him with dread. He held her shoulders. Not yet, he reassured her. That hour, my hour, is not here yet. She relaxed slightly into his hold. It is how the journey has to end, though, she asked. For the people to have wine, yes, that hour must come. Not my will, but my father's be done. He hugged her, and they embraced for several seconds. When they broke away, she had tears in her eyes. She wiped them away and strengthened herself. I am ready, she said, to me be as it pleases God. She looked straight at me and I went red, suddenly embarrassed to have not just witnessed, but been eavesdropping on this meaningful, intimate moment. She didn't seem to mind. She smiled peacefully. Do whatever he tells you she told me. Then it was the rabbi's turn to smile. He pointed to the six large washing jars. Take out the plates, he said, and top them up, right to the brim with water. I gathered my colleagues and we did so, putting the plates to one side and adding new water to what was left of the washing up. Next, he instructed us to draw some out and take it straight to the sommelier. Again, I drew the short straw. I did not dare look at what I was doing as I drew out a cup of the washing up water 
and trembling carried it over to my master to taste. As I gave it to him, I wondered what the rabbi was asking me to do. Was this some form of visual parable of which the Somalia was the unfortunate antagonist? And what would happen to me when he tasted the bilge? I certainly would not escape with only a simple demotion to the kitchens. The sommelier took the cup to his lips and drank. And I held my breath. The rabbi and possibly his mother understood it. As I walked back to the rabbi, I could not help myself. I had to steal a sip. I had to taste this wine, experience this miracle for myself. I am no wine expert, but even I could tell this wine was of an astounding quality. Its color was rich and deep, blood red, and I knew the moment I tasted it that I would both never thirst again and never have enough if I drank only this wine for a thousand years. This was good news indeed for the wedding party and the groom. In those washing up jars, there was the equivalent of nearly 200 more bottles of the stuff. There was truly an abundance of this new wine. These people would have wine to drink and to celebrate with for a very long time. I took the cup to the rabbi. This must be the best wine in the kingdom, I said, giving him the cup. And here it is in an ordinary house just for the gathering of the ordinary people here. The best wine, he said, the best wine is not yet. There will be a better wine than this for all the people, but the hour is not yet come. The journey has started now, though. When that hour does come, the people will always have wine. Wine that will never run out, no matter what happens, no matter where those people are. And those who drink it will never thirst again. And taking that cup of wine, he blessed it and gave it to me, saying, take, drink. This is for you. Amen. Thank you, Stuart, for those beautiful words. <clears throat> Very inspiring stuff. Thank you. <clears throat> and we join in with the words of the creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'll now hand you over to Anna for our prayers of intercessions. Anna, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? The moment I just forgot. I... 
I do apologize. Drawn here by God, let us bring to him our concerns for the church and the world. We pray that the church may be a vibrant sign of God's life in every generation and locality, serving, listening and loving with the human face of ordinary people, lit with the brightness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the world's attention may be refocused on that, on what is of lasting value, that in humility, all in authority may hear the real needs, honour them and act on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all the households and neighbourhoods represented here may be alerted to the sounds of glory around them in the ordinary daily miracles and come to welcome Jesus as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all who are searching for God may realize his closeness to them, that wrong lives may be courageously righted and damaged lives and attitudes mended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the, day, that the dying may turn to you and be safely led through that last journey to the peace and joy of eternal life. We pray that we may all one day experience God's heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may become increasingly aware of God's amazing love for each of us until our hearts are overflowing with, thanks, with thankfulness and praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Anna. So we now turn to the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace with a wave or a smile. Peace be with you all. <laughs> <laughs> peace be with you all <laughs> one day we'll be able to shake hands again my friends <clears throat> so we now come to our part of the communion blessed are you lord god of all creation through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you. Through to the divine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere. Mighty creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your son, our saviour Jesus Christ who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your spirit and lived as one of us. 
and this mystery of word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible and so are caught upon the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking the bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me when supper was ended he took the cup of wine again he praised you and he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for a forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life, and cup of salvation we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory great is the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come again lord of all life help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth look with favor on your people Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Michael and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. So we'll just hold a moment's silence before our following prayers. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. So, just some notices. Um, we've got our PCC meeting on Wednesday, half past seven. Um, please, could we have as many of us there as possible, please? Obviously, via Zoom. Um, also, um, we've started a fortnightly um, coffee morning. We had our first one yesterday, so the next one will be a week on Saturday. It's the first and third Saturday of the month, um, and it's 11 till 12. Um, the hope is we're going to kind of try and bring in different themes and um, try and shake you up, make it a bit different each each um, fortnight. So please come along and join us with any ideas you might have. But obviously, we could discuss all sorts about the world and all the joys that life brings. Um, so the world is our oyster with it. So please do come and join us. We had about um, 10 or a dozen of us yesterday, which was lovely, including a couple of bunny rabbits, which was great. Um, does anyone else have any more notices this morning? No? I mean, just to add as well, that obviously, church-wise, we how long's the police is string? We just do not know at the moment. I, I, obviously, the figures are sky high as they are. We're not going to be charging in anytime soon, but we, we, we'll keep you posted. And when we do have an, a reopening day, because I'm sure many are missing getting back together in person, then we will let you know. But for the time being, I just don't feel it's safe at the moment. So I am sorry that we've come to this decision, but it's a difficult time for all of us. Does anybody, no, no, more, no one else says no? Um, can we just see uh, some um, uh, information about giving? Um, basically, just, just to encourage people, please do keep giving. Obviously, we've not got as many services at the moment. So please, if you can be creative and find ways to give, that'll be wonderful. And we'll just share the, the video from the Church of England Diocese. <clears throat> Our church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services, fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you're able to give to us now, 
Here's how you can help. I know I will have made it in the diocese when we get a bald vicar on there one day. I still have our hope for that cartoon character coming up. Right. So, um, yeah, I've said about the coffee mornings and it brings us on to our final hymn. What a belter. Sing your hearts out. Let your neighbours hear you. How great thou art.
Wow. So thank you for all joining us all around the world on Facebook and YouTube and here in Flixton on our Zoom. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. Neil, you've behaved very well. You didn't do any drawing today. Very well done. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.